Good evening. I'd like to welcome you to the regular scheduled meeting for the Newmarket School District. Today is June 3rd, 2000. We open the meeting at 5 p.m. As we always do, I'd like to start this meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. Please join me. Great, thank you. Um, I'm going to make a minor adjustment to our agenda tonight. I'm going to be moving our public comment section down after our discussion items. Tonight we are blessed with two amazing groups of students, and I want to give them as much time as we possibly can to celebrate all of the things that, that um, they're bringing forth tonight. Two of the items that we're going to be talking about, the Newmarket Environmental Team, which is also called Net Zero, will be uh, discussing their garden plans, and all of us are super excited for that. And then we are going to be celebrating the top 10 graduates of the Newmarket High School class of 2021. So um, we've got lots of fun stuff to do tonight, so I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Dalton, and he, I believe, is going to uh, introduce the Newmarket environmental team. to see you all. Um, it's always nice to have the opportunity to sort of share some of the good things that are happening in the school and tonight is one of those nights so thank you for inviting us here. Um, our first group um, I'm gonna let them just take it right from the beginning and then and maybe come back in afterwards because I'm going to share sort of how this uh, proposal has grown but at this time I'd like to uh, introduce uh, Phoebe as president of the uh, Net Zero group and Mr. Richards maybe to come up and talk about his introduce your team members for this and then you could start your presentation. Okay. Wonderful. That's excellent. Thank you. Hi folks. Thank you for having us today. Um, I am a ninth grade U.S. history teacher over at the high school um, and I also advise Net Zero. Uh, this is our second year um, as a club, um, and we have a number of truly dedicated individuals who I am very happy to get to work with. Um, they've worked very hard on this proposal, um, so I hope you consider it. And with that, I'll turn it over to Phoebe. the officers of Net Zero, which stands for Newmark Team Zero Waste, and we are here today to present our pitch to implement a garden at our school. So first, we'll introduce all of us, <laughs> all of ourselves, and our positions. As you know, my name is Phoebe Spytek. I am the president. My name is Sylvia Russell, and I'm the vice president. My name is Kate Geyer, and I'm the secretary. My name is Sophia Nolan, and I'm co-treasurer. Riley Nolan and I'm my sister's co-treasurer. <laughs> <laughs> and my name is Porter Malone and I'm the outreach. So our mission statement um, for Net Zero is Newmark Env Environmental Team Zero Waste advocates for a better and more sustainable environment in the Newmarket schools and community. Through this statement, we feel that our plan for phases, for garden phases, would contribute to the beauty and sustainability of the Newmarket community. First up, we have Sophia Nolan explaining the first phase. As Phoebe said, my name is Sophia Nolan, and I will be talking about phase one of our plan to implement gardens at the junior senior high school in order to make our school more sustainable and presentable. The first step in our plan talks about creating two medium sized flower beds on either side of the main entrance, along with the use of potted plants around the awning structure. As you can see in the master plan, the left side of the, sorry, <laughs> as you can see in the master plan under the subheading phase one, the measure gardens are 21 feet by 7 feet and 3 inches on the left side mm -hmm. and 21 feet by 11 feet and 2 inches on the right. This is when you're looking at the school. Mm -hmm. um, the master plan also shows the different materials we hope to use and possible funding methods. If you have any questions regarding any of the information I've just touched upon, please feel free to ask. However, there is a section of the master plan, like I said before, labeled phase one, which may be helpful in answering questions. Um, next, my sister Riley is going to be talking about the rationale behind our plans for this step. 
So as Sophia stated, um, the first phase of our plan is a flower garden located on the side of the building facing South Main Street. As Net Zero was envisioning a garden plan for our school, there were a couple of factors that strongly influenced the creation of this specific garden. The first being that we have had a garden in the same spot in the past. The old building did have gardens on that side of the building facing the road, as well as gardens around the entrances. However, during construction, these gardens were lost. Net Zero would like to bring them back as we believe a garden near the main entrance would restore what construction has temporarily taken. Furthermore, the addition of these gardens would enhance the appearance of our school, making it more welcoming for guests, students, faculty, and staff. Finally, as our club is the environmental advocate, um, it seems pertinent to environmental benefits from this decision. The plants and flowers um, our group has discussed all have benefits for the natural pollinators in our area, our area as we are trying to keep all of these plants local, um, and it would help slow their population decline. There was a lot of thought put into the first phase of this plan, helping ensure that it is both reasonable and attainable. And the factors that have helped form these ideas have now been translated into what we call phase one. Next, Phoebe will be discussing the materials we would use for this phase. So the materials that we would need consists of flowers, mulch, pots, and soil, all which we plan to buy locally. The flowers would be a mixture of perennials, annuals, Perennials and annuals consisting of marigolds and petunias in the pots, zinnias, black-eyed susans, cosmos, coneflower, blue lily turf, hosta, and candelabra primrose in ground. These flowers grow well in New Hampshire and are local. If you have any other flower suggestions, please let us know. We'd love to hear them. If you look in the packet, you can see the estimated prices of all the flowers. It's around bottom of page four, top of page five. And we hope to get the money mainly through district funds or grants and donations. We have already received a generous donation from Wentworth Gardens towards our garden. Um, and next, Kate will be explaining the last So we have outlined three other phases that we would like to accomplish in the next couple of years, if possible. For the second phase, we have decided to incorporate rain barrels into the garden. Rain barrels would be a cost-effective and environmentally friendly, friendly way of watering our garden. We are still exploring funding options for this phase. Phase three would involve incorporating a composting system which would, which would use excess food from the cafeteria. This would reduce the cost of food waste and food access at the school. We are still exploring options for what exactly this would look like and how it would be funded. Phase four looks at creating a small vegetable garden with raised beds. We had thoughts of creating a, a sort of extended learning opportunity by asking technology education classes to build these beds. We like this idea because it would have a smaller bearing on costs and would allow more of the Newmarket School community to be involved in the garden. We have also talked about incorporating these vegetables that we grow into consumer science classes and possibly cafeteria lunches. However, we are still reviewing the logistics and plausibility of these project extensions. Next will be Sylvia explaining the rationale behind these phases. As Kate mentioned, rain barrels would be a cost-effective and environmentally friendly way to water our garden. We'd be able to conserve the town's water supply, which will certainly help in any droughts. And besides, town water usually has trace amounts of chlorine and other minerals that can build up in gardens and cause problems in the long run. With phase three, adding composting barrels to our gardens would allow us to reduce food waste. We'd be able to repurpose unused food for much needed fertilizer for our garden. In fact, with composting, we wouldn't need to spend money on fertilizer at all, allowing us to save more of our budget. Finally, by making raised beds for vegetable gardens, we'd be able to combine, combine multiple school competencies. As Kate mentioned, our technology education classes would create the actual beds for our gardens, and our vegetables could be used by the school's consumer science classes. We could also sell vegetables at farmer's markets to offset some of the costs associated with the garden, though a donation is not out of the question either. Overall, the additions of the gardens are beneficial to our community and environment. Moving on to Porter and our plans for the garden over the summer months. During the summer months, our club plans on electing a member to be known as the garden overseer. This member will be responsible for ensuring that the gardens, flowers, and possible vegetable garden are taken care of. Through this position, the garden overseer will create a rotating weekly schedule regarding whose turn it is to maintain the garden. This includes weeding and watering. 
This schedule will also have a backup role each week in case the original garden gardener for that week is unable to fulfill their duties. This system will help increase member involvement with the garden so the overseer is not the only one involved. Our club plans on taking full responsibility over these gardens. We believe that it is extremely important that our club is in charge of the garden during the summer months so the maintenance crew at the school is, does not have a burden on them. Now I'll give it back to Phoebe for closing remarks. So thank you for listening to our proposal and now we would like to answer any questions if you have any. Wow, <laughs> yeah, that is one of, exactly. You know, we've all um, seen some presentations in our time and the thought and the detail and the research that you all put into that was 100% evident. I'm so proud of what you're doing. This is amazing. And I think I speak for all of us. This is really cool, <laughs> really cool. Um, does anyone have any questions before? I just had a couple. Do yeah. you know what the total cost is uh, associated with phase one? We do not know the total cost yet. I know that um, we, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> we have $100 in a gift card amount of money to Wentworth Gardens, so hopefully that will put a fairly large dent into paying for the flowers. Um, we predict, um, sorry, however, it would still leave roughly around $400 that we would need for mulch pot, pots and soil, I believe. Never mind, it's 150. 150? Um, yes. Um, we do know that the mulch might cost a little over $70, but we really hope that possibly if we reach out to local places that they could give us more gift cards and donations into that too. Like possibly over Sean's hardware, if they could help us with mulch, possibly. Like, like, <laughs> like yeah. <laughs> maybe a little discount for a school like and for the rain barrels too and i know the town at one point was giving out rain barrels and compost so it'd be nice if we could have them and i i am very excited for those too that's I true there's that a compost at the uh, transfer center so maybe they oh that's use right that stuff, so. cool. we will definitely look into both of those <laughs> well and i just love how you incorporated the classes because i'm learning about biology with the worms and like all the fun stuff you guys can do. <laughs> yeah, you've really taken some time to, you know, incorporate some other classes and other, uh, you know, for the, when we were in school, it was called shop. So when the kids in shop would be able to make those things, I think that that is really, really neat. Um, in a shameless plug, but there's an organization in Newmarket called NCEP. And um, you may want to look into that uh, for some grant money that to, um, oh, and this <laughs> is Sorry. excellent. Okay. Hey, my sister, our co-treasurers, as we said before, and Mr. Richards, our wonderful advisor, has definitely sent over some um, grants that we didn't want to apply for yet because we didn't have this plan approved, you know what I mean? Um, but we definitely will look into that more next year, but we had been looking at some of their grant programs to see if any of them would fit what, our, what we're looking for. Wonderful. Um, may I ask what the timeline looks like if this is approved? So if this is approved, we're hoping to get it rolling, at least starting to roll before the school year ends. I know that I've talked to the group members about that and they seem okay with it. I know that I talked to Interact Club about helping out with mm -hmm. the garden too. Mm -hmm. I, the president of Interact Club was very excited too. Um, we also discussed that if this is, if the whole planning of the garden will go into the summer, we are also okay with doing that and taking control during that because we will be taking care of the garden over the entirety of the summer. Excellent. Anyone else have any questions? I, no, I was just gonna say, it's a definitely a very comprehensive uh, presentation, thank you. And one thing I noticed you have potted marigolds. I believe marigolds might be a natural pest deterrent, so you may wanna look at sprinkling them throughout the garden. Yes, thank you. <laughs> the horticulture on the side. <laughs> right, and I, I was telling Mr. Richards earlier, I have some of the hostas daily from when we took down the sign at the start. So I'll be more than happy to break those up in the fall and, and share those pieces. So I can have some of the original. And Miss Sanborn might have some as well. 
Um, I'd look to someone on the school board to provide a motion to approve the um, New Market Environmental Team Net Zero Garden Plan. I'll make a motion to approve the plan from Net Zero. Motion by Ms. McKinney. I'll second. Second by Mr. Haymaker. Congratulations, students. Nice job. So now that they've presented the plan, I'll, I'll share, you know, sort of the developments of it and how excited I am about it. Um, when they came to me, they were like over the moon, just like they were ready to like build a vegetable garden that was going to feed the entire school. <laughs> and uh, their enthusiasm is going to carry the day, right? Um, the sign of a healthy school, particularly when you're looking at high school, is that students are able to put forth initiatives and they're able to reach out into the community and bring people together and make it real. They're so fired up to do that in every way, shape, or form. Uh, we're really proud of them. But, you know, we harnessed that energy and we focused it a little bit. They did a lot of work. Uh, Mr. Richards did a nice job pulling them together and Phoebe led the group through and, and they came up with that plan today. And I think, I think it's a good one. Um, from my prior experience, this type of project really brought an entire community together. It went from just garden beds, which is phase one that you approve, to really a much bigger sort of community garden project that brought the entire community together. So I think this group has that kind of energy that they can bring that forth. And I think the resources that you asked about in the budget, those are all great questions. And I think as it gets shared publicly now, people will probably reach out and start to connect with this group to to really grow the idea. So we're really excited about it. I'm very proud of this group. They've done a great job. Um, and I know that they're gonna do good things over the next couple of years, so thank you. Mr. Dalton, yes. if members of the community are interested in um, donating um, product or you know their time or anything like that, is there a certain person that we should direct them to? Um, you, I, I, I would think maybe Mr. Richards Mr. as an Richards? initial contact okay, would perfect. be a good idea. Because, you know, everyone's watching. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's great. And, yeah, and if you're out there and, and you have an interest in gardening or you're connected to gardening, you have some, you know, either advice for us as we're learning about, you know, those pesticide-type plants that will help keep the bugs away or other information that might be helpful to the group, we certainly welcome that. Beautiful. Yeah. Wonderful. So uh, along that line, before I do the, the next piece for you. I did want to say that part of what has been really exciting for me in this role is that I get connected with groups like this monthly, and it's through that, uh, what we have is that um, student advisory group, mm -hmm. which is really all the student leaders coming together and they meet with the principal monthly, and that was a, that's new for me coming here. I did not have that experience before. And I say that because Zoe's sitting, sitting right here to the <laughs> right, and she leads that group. And she has done an extraordinary job uh, of making that happen and giving kids voice in those meetings so that these ideas come forward. And then that sets them up for their next meeting with me. So it's really kept us going. And Zoe's done a terrific job doing that. So that's sort of the trigger for me into these groups. And I just want to recognize Zoe since she's sitting here as well. So. Excellent. Let's, right, let's make it official. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes 5-0. 4-0. 4-0. One abstain. <laughs> she is. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much. This has been a wonderful presentation. Super excited for you all. This is great. Um, so moving on to our next discussion item, we are going to talk about the top 10 graduates of the New Market class of 2021. Yes, thank you. So, um, you know, this is that time of year. We're finishing up. Our senior's last day is tomorrow. I'm sure they're extremely excited to be finishing <laughs> their, their academic portion of the year. Um, and hopefully enjoying some celebration next week with their classmates, with some fun events as it leads into graduation. And a part of that tradition is that we honor our top 10 uh, students in the class. And we have an extraordinary group of individuals this year in that top 10 setting. Uh, this class is, 
I'm incredibly talented from, from my eyes, just coming in as an observer here this year and getting to know everyone. Um, I've, I've been really impressed with the leadership from really all of the kids in the class. They've, they've done some extraordinary things and they're academically obviously very talented. So we do have our top 10, which I'm happy to announce uh, to you this evening. A few of them here uh, tonight. I don't know if we were expecting more. Um, well, because I, we're doing so well in the playoffs, yeah. some <laughs> of our top 10 are uh, participating in baseball and softball uh, games. And uh, so they, they sent me a little note earlier saying that they wouldn't be able to have all folks could attend because they wanted to make sure that they were leveraging the last moments of their senior year and enjoying some of these um, big events. Yeah. So, so go so Mules. So as sometimes happens, the kids who are in the top 10 are involved in other activities, and <laughs> uh, tonight is no different. So uh, that said, we'll, we'll read through all of the names, recognize all of them, and then, um, you know, you have That would be great. If you could um, go through the names, and we could um, take a moment afterwards to congratulate everyone. We've got a little gift for each of you, and it would just be great to take a few moments to enjoy that, so please. Excellent. So I'm going to start at the top. So we do announce the top two uh, in terms of rank, and then the remaining of the top ten we do alphabetically and recognize them as a group. Okay. So our valedictorian this year, number one, is Sierra Yim. And uh, our salutatorian, if you weren't familiar to you, is Taylor Kennison. Our remaining uh, top ten include uh, the following. Colin Blake, Michaela Hartman, Abigail Henry, Colby Kump, Zoe McGurk, <laughs> Stephen McKenney, Zachary Mosher, and Hayden Russell. That rounds out our top ten. Wonderful. Thank you all for joining us here tonight. Um, we do have one more presentation, and then we'll take a brief recess um, so that we can all have a few minutes for those of the top ten who have been able to attend tonight to have a little moment to um, let them share some of their experiences uh, and to offer our gratitude for the great representation um, that they make uh, on behalf of Newmarket as they transition out into the big world. Um, oh, the places you'll go. Yes. So I think Elizabeth has uh, one more. We'd like to we have one about. more presentation. Hi. Yeah, we'll do it without Colin. To Taylor. I want to <laughs> I want to thank you for working with the board for the past few years. You have done an amazing job representing the student body. Your position has never been easy, but still you stepped forward and did it with dignity and grace. I have loved watching you. Gain your voice and confidence and wish you joy and happiness. That's it. <laughs> Taylor, on behalf of the entire town of Newmarket and every person in the student body, you have come here week after week and you've given us great information and you've shared with the entire town information that nobody would have access to if you didn't step up and do this. So your voice not only made a difference to this group, but it made a difference to the entire town. So we are so proud of you and couldn't be happier. So congratulations. Thank you. cameras may still roll, um, yes. but we just wanted to at least get a chance to say hello to everyone.
we could have everyone um, back. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Great, no. Thank you, everyone. Welcome back. Uh, we're just finishing up and saying our goodbyes to amazing students. <laughs> so just give us one more second. Brilliant minds. Yeah. Well, things have been happening for the past year, and you don't we, realize it. Yeah, like we are all sending smart people yeah. into this world. Um, so moving along, we're going to go into our reports. We have our student representative report. We have some committee reports and then um, the superintendent report. So Taylor, could you please do yeah. student representative report for us? Yes. I wanted to start off with all the senior events that's going to be going on next week. Um, starting Monday, there's going to be a senior bank parking lot, but that's exciting. And then Throughout the week, there's going to be graduation practice, of course, and then there's going to be a senior outing at Hilltop. And then Wednesday is prom at The Rock. That's very exciting. We're all excited that we get to have a prom. We did not expect that going into this year, so that's amazing. And then um, Thursday, scholarship night, so that's awesome, too. And then Friday, of course, is graduation at 6 p.m., so very excited for that. And then, um, so last week, we um, uh, the clubs painted the picnic tables in the courtyard that was donated by the class of 2018. So that was fun. And the SST graduates um, graduated this week, so congrats to all of them. Work. And um, so there was a concert actually Wednesday too for the chorus and band, something that we probably also didn't expect to be really exciting. And then the girls softball plays PCA Saturday and varsity boys baseball plays Farmington today. Anybody know the the, of the I don't know. baseball game? I can't. Anyone? I, I will check. Okay, we'll find <laughs> out. Okay, good. Taylor, thank you again very much for all of your service. We Thanks. really appreciate it. Um, moving on to our committee reports. Our next um, report is on our facilities, buildings, and ground task for, uh, force. So, uh, Gary, please. Yep, so we met... Uh, Last Friday, we discussed some costs for the various options, um, and we're meeting again on the 11th. And I don't want to speak for our chairperson, but there's a good chance we'll probably have soon uh, for the board. Great, excellent. That's that's exciting. Um, I'm going to keep the camera on you. Um, budget committee. Uh, in the budget committee, we met with Dr. Gibbons, um, reviewed the and Jana, and reviewed the uh, Q3 financials. So everything was. Everything was good. Yep. Budget was good. Great. Excellent. Um, our final report before superintendent is um, the Safe School Opening Task Force. Uh, the school board representative is Andrew. And um, Andrew, if you could give us a little overview of uh, task force is forming itself. Absolutely. Uh, first, I want to apologize for uh, showing up late. We had a unexpected doctor's appointment that was later than expected. And I do not take it lightly that I was late, so I apologize for that. Um, so on Wednesday, uh, I had the opportunity to participate in the Safe School um, Opening Task Force. Uh, it was nice uh, to see the variety of people around the, around the table, uh, the school nurse, uh, as well as some parents that um, I didn't recognize from um, previous committees. So it was kind of nice to see uh, multiple viewpoints added there as well. Um, Start off the committee uh, watching the report uh, from New Hampshire that the superintendents and other uh, daycare facilities um, listen to every other week. <laughs> yes, uh, which is very informative. Um, and I think those are relatively open to the public as well because I had seen quite of those in the past. And I think if anyone's confused about what the expectations are, why the reasoning behind uh, some of the protocols are in place, it's a really good resource uh, as well as kind of calming for me to figure out you know, what exactly is going on and if there's much smarter people in the world that kind of have an idea of what's, what, what to do. Um, and then uh, from there, we had the opportunity to listen to Dr. Gibbons, uh, the town manager, kind of talk about their thinking over the past year and where we are right now. Uh, and then finally that, we broke into three groups, uh, teachers, uh, students, and then parents uh, to start forming questions for a questionnaire 
uh, that will hopefully go out to the public here uh, relatively soon because uh, we are in the time frame here. Um, and Dr. Gibbons, please stop me if this is incorrect or if I'm interpreting this wrong. The, the, the biggest difficulty here is, you know, we want, um, we want to create, you know, uh, an idea of what the coming year is going to be like. Because mine are saying, Grant, I wasn't here <laughs> when you guys were making these incredible decisions um, that perhaps we have a better footing to start on for uh, the coming school year that we could plan from. But there's going to be uh, multiple changes uh, from the state as well as CDC guidelines. So the idea here is, you know, how do we create expect but also create flexibilities and that's what we're really trying to keep in mind here so i, I hope that's correct okay. yeah excellent that's great i'm glad that um you know you're on that andrew keep us posted and looking everyone i think is really looking forward to getting the survey and you know being have an opportunity for their voices to be heard so i appreciate that thank you um susan would you like to do your superintendent report please yes i just have a couple of exciting um items to share with you tonight piggyback off of Taylor's report um, and announce uh, those of our students who receive their certificates at uh, Seacoast School of Technology at their ceremony on Monday. Um, Principal Dalton and I attended and uh, we're so proud of our kids. Um, so uh, with a certificate in animal and plant science, uh, we had Phineas Furman and Brianna Fillion um, and for Auto Technologies, Joseph Doyle. Uh, getting a certificate in Biomedical Science and Technology was Michaela Hartman, and she was also the uh, speaker oh. representing. Yep, so we're very proud of her. She did Excellent. an awesome job. Um, uh, with a certificate in Digital Media Arts, Riley Andrisky. I want to give a shout out to Riley. She's getting her certificate as a junior. Congratulations. Uh, um, Selena uh, Hernandez also received her certificate in digital media arts. In the um, area of health science technologies, Liliana Barrett, Audrey Davis, Riley um, Palashano, and Julia Perry all received certificates from SSP. Um, in marketing technologies, Evelyn Zungji, and in welding, Jacob, I'm going to probably destroy the last name, um, Hartfilo. Great job, I Jacob. I spelled that, <laughs> pronounced that correctly. Um, so 14 students received their certificates and we couldn't be any prouder. So tonight we celebrated our top 10, uh, our net zero. We've had you know, an outdoor concert. Uh, we had an improv, live improv show that then was aired on um, Channel 13. We have field day coming up. You know, as much as we're not back to normal, we have been transitioning, and um, there's an awful lot of excitement and joy um, that students and staff are experiencing right now. Uh, we had our, our top 10 luncheon. It was just amazing to be able to sit there uh, on the water and enjoy uh, a meal, you know, and just, just take a moment, you know, take a moment. And so, uh, so many things are happening. Of course, the graduations um, coming up or the moving up ceremonies are kind of, you don't graduate till you, of course, uh, get to high school, but uh, we have moving up ceremonies planned. Um, again, they're not, you know, what you traditionally get, but we are super excited to, to have them this year. You know, last year we didn't have anything except for a graduation ceremony, which was much more than most communities were able to offer. So we're, we're excited about these events. You know, uh, Taylor shared all of the activities we have going on next week. Um, we're very uh, uh, happy with, you know, the partnerships we've been able to form in order to be able to offer our kids what we think and the kids believe <laughs> as well. Um, it's going to be a, an awful lot of fun next week. So um, great way to, to end and celebrate um, Wonderful. a lot of accomplishments. So that's, that's that. Uh, two other things, um, and th this is an announcement I'm, I'm making on behalf of Steve Fournier, our uh, town manager. Uh, as you know, Kyle True, um, the police chief for uh, many years and a member of the police force for many more years, um, retired last week and uh, Lieutenant uh, Greg Jordan has been um, appointed to be the chief of police. So I just wanted to make that announcement in case it hadn't gone out and in case you, know, you as board members uh, hadn't heard that news. So I will set up a, a meeting with him, you know, in the next Very couple good. of weeks. 
for graduation. You know, this is a super, super busy time of year. Um, so I will uh, give him a minute to <laughs> breathe, <you> know, <laughs> get himself moved into the office and all of that. And then uh, I'll meet with the chief and, and we'll, um, you know, talk about uh, Great. our partnership. So and then last but not least, this is kind of really hot off the press today. As you know, we've been planning for um, summer school and we have a learning loss plan. And at the elementary school, um, our program is going to run the last two weeks of this month. So we have been going great guns to, one, identify students who, who need that, um, send out invitations and uh, get them back. And we have 75 students, wow. 75, this is just elementary students who are going to participate in our summer school program. Wow, that um, is amazing. Learning loss program in. Uh, what a great opportunity. It, we're so, so ecstatic about that. And of and course we're going to have our, um, um, you know, extended year program for yep. any students that would have, um, we were aware would have learning loss over the summer. We provide an extended year program that starts in July, um, and we're still uh, pulling together information um, at the junior senior high school uh, to send uh, information out to uh, to students who who would be who would benefit from it. Of course, at the high school level, it's a little different. You know, you get credits, and so identifying competencies to um, uh, master before that they can, you know, complete their courses. It may vary in what they master. So, you know, right now, uh, teachers, um, uh, you know, have been working on trying to identify what competencies and who, and some students will need to take whole courses over and, and, and just trying to put the final touches on that. And of course, the master schedule. So we're graduations, you know, all of that um, that we have going on. So I just wanted to let people know that okay. it's, you know, what a, what a wonderful response um, to this. Yeah. Right. And Susan, yeah. oh, sorry. Oh. And we have enough staff to, that have volunteered to come to come in for the summer. It's amazing. Yep. That, that says a lot about the dedication of the staff. Yeah. Yep. I can tell you the number of schools that have just hesitated yeah. to do it. Yeah. <laughs> we did stuff. have to, so the elementary school is only running two weeks. The junior senior high school, we do have some outside people we have our own in-house <coughs> staff, but we've also will be hiring. Um, we have hired a few additional staff members to be able to run all of the programming that we have. Uh, we're offering so we That's do have great. enough staff, which is you know last summer. Of course, it was remote. People were fried, and yeah. uh, you know you can't blame people at that right. point for not wanting to uh, participate in the summer program um, remotely. Um, and we weren't geared up for it. You know, we had we were just getting computers in for our teachers. Who, if you remember a year ago when we only had Chromebooks for teachers, we had nothing. We had nothing when we went out. Um, so, you know, um, we're grateful that we're in a very different spot, um, and that uh, the response has been great. And I'll give you an update next time about you know how, how things are shaping up for our middle school. And okay, school good. Yeah. So I know a lot of people yeah. are um, really you know, interested in finding out with the junior and senior high school, so yeah. thank you. Um, I had um, moved public comment, so um, I wanna get that in right now. So if we have anyone here in the audience that would like to make a public comment, this would be a great time. Good evening, Nate Douse, 255 Wadley Falls Road here in Newmarket. And, um, uh, this meeting was fantastic to see all the things going on. Thank you to the school board. Uh, really thank you to the students. Um, an opportunity for kids to come together, like-minded individuals, and work hard. I can't wait to see what they accomplish. And uh, just hearing that gave me some ideas on how I might be able to contribute. Uh, I was hoping they were still here to discuss it further, but um, you know, I know where a lot of them live. <laughs> um, the other reason I'm here tonight is just to, uh, I've been watching the board meetings, and um, the last board meeting was a little concerning that uh, we hear a lot that school is for the students, what's best for students, and I, I believe that and uh, have tried to do so for the last 20 years uh, and have chosen not to do that anymore. Um, but when we were, we were talking about numbers of students in the school, that's, that's important. Um, the first page of the school introductory website says we have 1,058 students and a budget of $22.3 million. That's on the first page. That's public information. So. To find out number of students leaving a school district, to me, that would be a top concern as well. That being said, um, I believe last meeting, Mr. Swanson asked if we could find out that information, and uh, it didn't go over so well. Um, you know, people were too busy, worried about confidentiality. 
although we got numbers on the first page of the, the, the website there. A and the worst one was probably that I'm not sure it's as easy as we think it might be, something along those lines. Uh, but to me, the implication there is, so let's not try. I don't know, that doesn't make sense. Anyhow, it didn't sit well. And although I am resigned at the end of this year, uh, it's not the end of this year yet. I went on to Infinite Campus. I thought back and looked over the years, and I just wanted to let you guys know, Gary, I don't know if it's fully accurate by a student or two, but uh, I went back through the, the, the seven grades currently there through the past six, seven years, and a number of students who have left each year. And it, it only took about a half an hour, so um, if you'd like to use this as a starting point to maybe I, I don't want to get too close, so I'm just gonna leave it here. But um, you know, I just think it's important with the community and the school board members that they're hearing all the concerns and looking at all the aspects of the school and what actually makes it healthy. And my opinion has always been students are most important. It sure as heck isn't about me as a teacher and you know other people, that's up to them to decide. But here's some information about students. I'm just gonna leave it here. And uh, that's all I had to say. Great, thank you very much. I'm the only public comment, so I'm gonna bug out and let you all continue your evening. Okay, thank you very much. Um, did we receive anything um, to be read by anyone? We have a couple of parents uh, late this afternoon that um, sent in a few comments. Okay. So I will read them. Uh, the first one is uh, to the school board and superintendent from um, Aspen Her um, Hashel. I live at 146 Ashwamp Road and have been a lifelong resident of Newmarket and have two sons at the, uh, the junior senior high school. I'm requesting that you immediately remove the mask recommendations for all students in our school district for the 21-22 school year. I can no longer sit back and let my sons go through this period in their lives wondering why mom never fought for us. Ever since Governor Sununu lifted the state mask mandates, our small town low infection rates has hung on to mask requirements for our children in the school and even outside the school. For an entire year, I have been following doctors and scientists from all over the world urging for the removal of masks on children, that masks aren't effective for healthy individuals. Even the head of the NIA, NIAID has admitted that masks don't work. They only help to contain the respiratory droplets of the sick and infected, but by viruses themselves are small enough to pass through. So why are you continuing to mask up our healthy children who were never dangerous transmitters of this virus? Why have you kept them masked up behind plexiglass walls and continually spreading the fear that makes them feel like they are going to kill their classmates and teachers if they pull down their masks to get a breath of fresh air? Have you even thought about what, what that is doing to the mental health and emotional state of the very young um, kids? The preschoolers and kindergartners, the children who has claustrophobic or suffering from physical sensory overload, the junior high student with severe de um, dermatological allergies, the high school student who gets no interaction at home and looks forward to being around other school setting, but can't even think about engaging with classmates for fear he or she is not socially distanced enough or needs to pull down the mask to breathe, but isn't allowed to. These kids are going to grow up remaining fearful and guilty for the virus that has 99.98% survival rate for young and healthy. Again, this has been stated that face masks are in, ineffective at blocking the transmission of viral respiratory diseases such as COVID-19. On the contrary, face masks have been demonstrated to have severe negative psychological and physiological effects. Children are not vectors for the transmission of COVID-19 and should not be made to feel as though they are. It is time to remove the masks off of our children, off of our students before irrevocable, irrevocable damage is done to them before they even reach adulthood. I know so many parents who share stories about witnessing the decline in spirit, health, and overall motivation of their children, mine included. And it makes me sick to my stomach that my local elected officials and school board members agree to go along with these requirements. It's time that we truly listen to all of the doctors and scientists who have put their life and jobs on the line to speak out about the negative effects of masking our children. 
It's time we critically dissect the information being fed to the masses from our state health to make decisions for our town based on data specific to our residents, not according to the statewide levels where the data is coming from a few heavily populated towns where the numbers are reflective of the sick and elderly, where we don't count false positive tests as hard numbers that equate to death rates. Furthermore, our school board members and superintendents should be evaluating the effect their rules have had on our children. Not why the rules are implemented, but if the effects and outcomes of the, of the rules. In my eyes, I don't see a single positive outcome. Lastly, on behalf of so many children who don't have the voice or the means to speak up for themselves and the parents of these children who feel they are losing an uphill battle, I urge you to reconsider the faulty logic of mask recommendations and remove the requirements, if not effectively now, then for the 21-22 uh, New Market Junior Senior High School school year. I understand that there are also many parents with opposing views and many welcome the mask requirement. To this, I offer you a solution, make it optional. Show the community that you can, you can lead us through this unprecedented time by working with residents, with all of us. Allow the parents and the students to make the choices that are best for them without fear of punishment. Thank you for your time. <coughs> The next um, letter received uh, is from Rachel Willer. Dear school board members and Susan, I would be reading this letter tonight, um, but she's at the, bas the baseball game with her son. And right now it's one to zero. Um, I am writing again in regards to the school mask policy. At this point in time, June the 3rd, 2021, I believe enough information and guidance has been given on a state and federal level that at least, uh, that at the very least, outdoor mask requirements can be let go. Yesterday, the state of New Hampshire Health and Human Services revised their recommendation again to say, we can recommend that schools and, and childcare agencies can remove masks in outdoor settings, regardless of a person's vaccination status, including at recess and non-contact sports. I know you all keep referring me to the, CD, to the state and CDC guidelines as your main factor, we now have the state at least saying to take them off while outdoors, and I'd like to remind you that the CDC does not make policy or laws, it only gives recommendations on a national level. Please look carefully at our town numbers, and you will see that their recommendations are not applicable to this little town. Next week is an unexpected heat wave, and I personally am very nervous for my kids and all the kids wearing a mask in very warm buildings, as well as the teams hopefully be playing in playoff games. Please immediately remove this mask requirement. If not now, then it is our strong recommendation that this not be required in fall. And last um, is from uh, Jolene Felix. Hello, my name is Jolene Felix and I live at 187 Grant Road. I've lived in New Market for nearly 17 years and my husband grew up here. We had two older children in the New Market School District and one who will be a sophomore in the fall, graduating class of 2024. I'm imploring you for this next year to be mask free for our children. These kids have been through so much since we received the first phone call, canceling school on March 10th, 2020, due to a COVID scare from someone in Newmarket. Nothing has been the same since that day. These children have been masked for 15 months. Dr. Fauci himself has said, that, has said this, and I quote, Masks are really for infected people to prevent them from spreading infection to people who are not infected rather than protecting uninfected people from acquiring infection. He goes on to say, I do not recommend you wear a mask, particularly since you are a low risk, you are a low risk for infection. Um, please read that again. Masks are for infected people to prevent the children who are sitting in the classrooms are the least affected in all of this. You may by now have, they have, you may know by now that they have 99.99% recovery rate. They are healthy young kids who need to breathe fresh air, see their friends' faces, smile, and have normal social interaction while in school. This is so important for the mental and emotional health. If a child is ill, then common sense says that the child, that the child, to keep the child home until healthy. 
but why are you voting to make healthy children mm -hmm. suffer? You know as well as I do, that makes no sense. It is up to you as servants of our town to do what's best for the children. The governor ended the state's mask mandate. The town rescinded the mask mandate. It's time for you as elected officials and the mask mandate in schools. They have been, there have been incidents where s children have passed out wearing masks in schools and athletes collapsing. Why at this point would you vote to restrict breathing on children? Please leave it up to the children's parents to decide if they want their children wearing a mask covering, a, ma a face covering all day long. That is not a choice you should make. School districts across New Hampshire have already said no to masks required in the fall. Can you please dig deep and put children first? Thank you for your time and please vote in the best interest of the children and the health and safety of masks in our school. I think I have one more actually. Yes, one more. Um, yesterday, uh, this is from Erica Herr Her Herrera. Um, yesterday, the New Hampshire Department of Health and Human Services, including Dr. Chan, amended the mask ordinances, the mask guidance for schools of particular importance to this uh, parents is this piece, face mask use in school and childcare settings with levels of community transmission decreasing. We recommend that schools and childcare agencies can remove masks in outdoor settings regardless of the person's vaccination status, including at recess and during non-contact sports. Our superintendent has already stated that she will not abide by this updated guidance despite referring to Dr. Chan's earlier guidance release by this same group on 519. She will only follow CDC guide, guidelines now. I, reach out, I reached out to the Commissioner of Education who told me he will reach out to Susan to discuss. Parents are not happy and we are seeing, seeking assistance from the same lawyer that is currently representing parents in lawsuits or in suits against Hollis, Brookline and Bedford. Do we really want our town tied up in litigation over this? It is, is it that important that you all keep our kids masked in order to what? protect your already vaccinated staff and teachers. Please speak with Commissioner Edelblue about the statewide and as, as I stated, allow our kids to remove masks while outdoors. Okay, um, so do we have anyone on the phone that may wanna speak for public comment? I don't think so. Um, Okay, I'm gonna close public comment at 6 p.m. I just wanna say thank you to each of you that uh, wrote in and expressed your concerns. They are important and we are listening to what you're, uh, what you're sending to us, so thank you. Our next part uh, of the, oh, so, sorry, Gary. Yeah, we just didn't have a, talk, a chance to ask any questions about the superintendent's report. Oh, sorry, you're right. No, it's fine. Um, I was wondering, are the move-up ceremonies one ceremony or split? There's one at the elementary school and one at the, um, well, they're both held at the elementary school, but um, there's one for the eighth grade and one for the fifth graders moving up into the sixth grade. Oh, so In the fact, tonight there's a meeting with parents uh, for the kids that are moving up, for the parents who have kids moving up to the. So all the eighth grades are graduating together then? There's two sessions. Um, oh, there are two each. sessions. Yeah. Can I ask why? What was the rationale for that? Um, the principals plan that um, following, you know, whatever our protocols are and, um, you know, whatever, you know, needs that they had. Um, I, I didn't get involved in that, honestly. I know that they're following all of our protocols and uh, trying to move people through, you know, in an orderly fashion. And um, I know that by allowing as many parents. Um, be able to attend as parents or family members to be able to attend at one time. So as, as a parent of an eighth grader, I should put that out there, um, full transparency. Um, I guess my thought is if it's, if it's the last day of school, we should consider allowing them to graduate together if possible. They, I know last year they didn't have an eighth grade graduation. This eighth grade and the fifth grade um, fortunate enough to have a graduation. I know the eighth graders haven't had any other trips or any kind of events. I guess I'd be inclined to uh, see if we can accommodate having them graduate together as opposed to separately. And that, I don't think it's our place as a board to do that, but we can revise the policy to allow that to happen. How 
possible spacing? Well, I'm presuming that's the reason for it. Uh, I don't know why else they'd separate it. So is is there is the protocols, right? Our okay. safety protocols that are in play here and um, the ones that we all agreed to that we would follow from now until the end of the year. And so the administration has taken the time to try to imagine how we could provide kids with this important opportunity and invite as many parents as, as we could and perform this in a safe and orderly fashion. And that's what the administration has done. So it would be um, two ceremonies so the there's, class. there's one ceremony, there's two um, components to it, both for the elementary school kids. So there, in other words, there's two or three classes. There's, I think it's three classes and then three classes, you know, during specific the period of time, right? Okay. And cohort, just like we have done. And then the same for um, the middle school. So for the middle school, the next day, my understanding is that the kids come up to the high school, I think. I think. I'm pretty sure. Was it move a day or whatever they call it? Yeah, is it yeah. step up day or step up day? Thank step you. Up that day. might be the term. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they come and they visit the junior high, kind of get a little. That's the kids' part. So the parents' part is tonight. The parents are tonight. And then, yeah, so there's different components to okay. the transition. So we. Yeah, I don't have a. Doing our best to. Eighth grade. I wasn't so I'm aware not this privy. was going to be a topic to discuss. Yeah. So I, I'm really not. Um, I didn't inquire myself personally usually if a parent has a question they would contact the building level staff who do the planning okay um so I, you know i'm happy to ask more detailed questions but you know we're following the protocols that the board has accepted and has asked us to use for planning well i, I mean in fairness they are protocols that we adopted months ago and things have changed um Adopted in April. Well, in April. Yeah. Um, but things have changed as, as people have articulated. Um, and I'm also very concerned with the temperature in classrooms. Do we have any kind of protocols in place to monitor the temperatures in classrooms and give the kids breaks? That we have ordered um, air conditioners for the summer school. They're arriving and on the southwestern sides of the buildings where the temperature gets hot and on the second floor we will be installing the air conditioners so that they're ready for Monday. It won't be every classroom. Um, so that should help mitigate. We've given uh, teachers, you know, suggestions for how to keep the temperatures down in the buildings by uh, not opening their windows when it's humid to introduce humidity into the building um, and to hold their shades down so the uh, light does not, you know, penetrate heat up the building. Um, and, and so we believe that those measures will will help to offset the impact of the, the, the heat over the next couple of days. Um, please, please forgive me, this might be a better question for Mr. Dalton. Um, do you know, is there, are, are classes able to go outside? I guess that might be a better question for <laughs> Mr. Dalton. Like, I know like- Do you us, mean like have classes outside? Well, no, like, I know for us, like, uh, I had the opportunity as long as I tell my administrator that when they spend the last 20 minutes outside, Make sure there's not a board policy that's prevented Mr. Dalton from allowing the teachers. No, to do we, that. we teachers are, are able to do that now. Awesome. You know, we, we sent out. And we do more hydration breaks. You know, kids take down their mask, and we you know we want to make sure everybody's staying hydrated. Those are standard protocols. We try to embed them in our routines. You know. So we, you know, the principals have talked to staff about that and we're preparing as best we can for the situation because, I, I mean, the alternative is, of course, I can call school, but that means that we have to go uh, to the other end. And I think um, from conversations with our, our staff, I'm sure with parents, that they would not be all too pleased with me calling school for, uh, a, you know, potential um, heat wave because we have to make those days up. Yeah, I think, um, you know, talking about making sure that the classrooms are, you know, the temperature is adequate, um, you know, closing the windows, not letting humidity 
things that we mirror at our home, where we close the house up and make sure the ACs are staying on and wearing cooler clothing and um, making, I just like to make sure that the kids are getting as many hydration breaks um, as, as possible. And I'm sure that Mr. Dalton is instructing his team to make sure that that's happening. Both principals have sent out as well as Mr. emails Pine, yes. already to, to staff regarding okay, that. Okay, good. So. Just a reminder on that. Yep. I mean, I personally would feel comfortable at this point where we are in removing the mandate while kids are seated, um, provided they're still speed, seated six feet apart, to remove the mask mandate um, oh. for, the, for the remainder of the year, given the levels we have in town. I, so, and, and I should say that I'm one of the biggest proponents of masks, and I have been right from the get-go. Yeah, I, 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 first, I want to know that the people that have written emails, I, I do read those, and I, I'm, mm -hmm. I don't want to speak for other people. I'm sure other people do. And I totally understand the frustration. Child in second grade in kindergarten, I, 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 I see the effects. I, I want you to know that, that people are listening. I, I don't want to speak for other people, but I'm sure there are people that we do understand that and do take that into consideration um and i know the, the frustration is that we're only like that there's a light at the end of the tunnel and we just want to run to it and um and the it, the issue is if we remove protocols it's gonna be a lot harder to put them back um and i um i my issue with removing masks with nine days left is that what kids have been experiencing for the past eight months is all of a sudden changed. And I will tell you from my personal experience, it is miserable that kids do not feel safe in the classroom, that I know that young children are less likely to spread it, but in the back of their mind, there might be a grandparent, a relative that is unable to get vaccinated. And if they take that home, like that it's here in the back of their mind. Um, I, I don't think this is the time to do it. Um, and I think that people, as we, as we see this reopening committee and get really, what's the next thing you like next year and all I see that reopening committee is a baseline for what is gonna happen, like is a baseline for what's gonna happen in the future. Um, because things are gonna change so dramatically between now and then. And I don't want to just rip up everything for these students at the last minute because I think it's just going to make things worse. And I think it's just, um, I'm sorry. No, it's, it's a great point. Two weeks. <laughs> great points. I think that, um, again, being in the school like Andrew, it's, it's hard, it's frustrating, it's hot. But there are the students who are worried. There are the students, there are the staff that live with that anxiety. We're talking nine days. I would love to rip the mask off. Um, I had a lab today where I had four labs actually where we have to wear the mask, the goggles, everything, and, and it's, it's hot. But the kids are happy. They're getting, they're doing what they normally would do. If we change things now, I think the amount of anxiety for our teachers and our other staff and some students wouldn't be worth the nine days. Obviously, we have a reopening committee. We're talking about what it's going to look like in September. And I hope in September we can go to school without masks. That's my hope. It all depends on how people behave. So for the just keep it on. And I want, I, 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 I agree with what was just said. I want you guys to know that I am not making this decision on this board for the teachers. I am doing it for the students. Because um, I, if anything, that the number one thing that students need to feel in the classroom is to feel safe. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, I'm much more worried about that kid that's in the back of their mind saying, am I gonna take it home and get a family member sick that can't get vaccinated? And I, it's nine days. It's not next year. Can I actually um, ask about the reopening uh, committee? I, I, I guess I'm a little confused. It, it seems very early to do it. and. Is that because of the federal funding through the ESSER program that we're required to have? That's what um, the commissioner is stating. I know that other states don't have to meet this requirement. So but other states don't need to submit a plan? 
Right. But New Hampshire is requiring and then a, a, a plan saying, and parent committee in order to for them to disperse the funding that they yes. receive through ESSER. It's a requirement of the federal government, and we don't. And we have to comply. So I guess just for the public, then this really is just a checkbox so that we can get federal fundings that we've. We can apply for federal fundings for money that we've spent for COVID, um, whatever, relief or, or support or, or funding, to recoup funding for COVID. So parents shouldn't in any way think this is the plan that's going to be, be presented to the board in whenever, the middle of summer, or as, as the reopening plan that we're going to use next fall. Well, I think, you know, as I've said all along and sub since September when we started building the budget, we already have been planning for the reopening of school next year. So our plan is going to largely repeat what we've been saying. We're going back to as normal of a school opening as possible and that we'll, we'll probably have to have some protocols in place. Um, we're not going to be able to identify what those are until, until we have more information. Based on what the state is saying, um, vaccines are not going to be available for 12 and under until September. Um, I know that Oyster River brought forward their reopening plan and they're saying that for kids, the schools that have kids that are 12 and under, they're going to open for masks, but as soon as those vaccinations are available, so they're writing their plan so that it can be way. If there's an outbreak, then, then we have to reconsider. So the way that Oyster River and many school districts and the what this group had talked about was to build it in a way that we can adapt um, going forward. But uh, for us, it really is, you know, it's not really a huge leap for what we're going to do. We know that we're planning for a pretty normal opening with maximum programs available to students next year. That, that's our plan. And, uh, and that's where the way the direction we're moving. And so we'll reiterate that, you know, for the state to have but it's you know it's not a matter of um really for us doing something dramatically different than what we've been planning all along um i think the couple of things that we talked about and what i receive um uh kind of questions about or comments about is the mask you know and we we know that and our survey information that's going out to students and staff and families is to find out how people feel about that right now you know we've heard or people how they feel about it, but we don't know what the other 600 parents feel about it at this point. And the, the work that we're doing, I think, is valid for next year. It's not a waste of time. Um, it's, it's not going to be perfunctory. We designed our, our programming this year based on what our community wanted, and next year's program will be based on what our community is. So, so I yeah. think that it's not a waste. <coughs> but, and, I, and I didn't but, mean to imply it's a waste in any in shape or form. I think it's valuable. I just. Obviously, it would be more valuable if we were able to do it later in the summer when we've had more information from the CDC when, and the DHHS. But we're required to do it now, so we're, we're doing it now. But I just want people to realize that if in July everybody gets vaccines and the CDC for some reason lifts everything, that would change completely what we could do. And if for some reason we had a resurgence, that would change it in another direction. Right. So, that so there's so nothing set in stone, I think is what I'm trying to articulate to people so that they don't get more um, anxious about. Yeah, that's, that's my biggest concern about the school reopening committee report that we'll have to vote on here is that people will think that this is next year. And I, I please correct me if I'm wrong, Dr. Gibbons, but I don't, I, as a board member, I do not see that. I think it's a starting point but especially with the CDC expecting to come up with the new guidance here in July uh, and more vaccines coming out, that things will hopefully change dramatically. It's just unfortunately this is something that we have to do for the state. And I just, it's not set in stone. I, I, please correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, I'm not anticipating that we're going to have another one of these groups again, if that's what you're suggesting. Are we going to- No, no. <coughs> I'm just trying to be very no. clear of what, that the outcome, the reason why we're doing this well, it's forced it, upon us at it, this it, point. It's yeah. forced upon us and that the outcome is likely to change somewhat depending on obviously the flexibility of the plan, but you know, and that's, people that's, shouldn't we think We have that is, in mind. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I appreciate what Gary's trying to do here. I think you're trying to be proactive with the possible 
comments coming up. Yeah, it's what and people I, understand yeah. why we're doing it. Yeah, yeah why yeah. we're doing it, and and also, but I also want to be clear that we're not putting together another committee yeah. after this committee later in the summer. No. We're, we're, we're gonna finish our learning loss plan in an August. Staff need to have a vacation. We did not get vacations last year. We have been going and going and going, and my staff need a break. So we, we have been planning. I just, you know, and I think it's important for the community to hear again, we are opening five days a week with a pretty normal schedule next year. You know, one of the, the advantages of, of having to go five days a week, because there were a lot, we didn't gain anything from a student perspective by doing that, other than getting in the routine of coming five days a week. But being able to um, test a, a, a different type of an arrival and dismissal schedule, that will probably remain pretty similar for next year. So we'll, we, we don't have to learn that new routine. And I think that that is very I think it really the couple of things that come, come down to, which are things that no matter what happens, we're gonna have to grapple with, is we already know things like we're gonna have to contact Trace. If we're gonna have to contact Trace, that tells us administratively that we need to be able to identify who's in our building and when they're in the building. Whether we have to wear masks or not, they're telling us we're gonna have to contact Trace. So putting those protocols in place in this plan or just, it's basically reiterating what we're doing now is, is really what we'll be putting in, in this plan. Mm -hmm. The things that will probably have trigger points is gonna be when can you take your masks off, when is it safe, and how does the community feel, feel about that? And then we're gonna, our plan was to build into the plan what that matrix is. When these events happen, then this is, this is what we'll do, or this is how everybody feels, and this is what we're gonna do out of the gate. I mean, we'll know better once we get the input from our stakeholder groups. So thank you for asking, and you know, that. You know, it's a great group. Is a lot of people I've never been introduced to have stepped up to um, has to participate, and I always think, think of that as being a good thing. So we'll keep you posted, but um, we're you know this will be you know meaningful work, uh, knowing that we're going to have to be somewhat flexible because we don't know what the future looks like exactly at this point. I think that um, task force is. It's so important and the work that you're doing in meeting and going over every detail means so much to the, Mr. Douse was just saying, the 1,041 kids that are in this district. And we're not just talking about a small handful of 70 kids, we're talking about 1,041. And every stone <coughs> needs to be unturned. And setting a proper plan, unfortunately, it has to be done quickly. It's not ideal at all. But I believe and I trust in the people that are on that committee that you will write the program that will allow the flexibility should the CDC change their requirements and recommendations. Keeping that language open to allow for even more normalcy, I think it's gonna be super important. Um, but I, I thank you, Andrew. I know that you're gathering an awful lot of information. And it's very difficult when we have a portion of the student body that is vaccinated and we have another whole huge portion of the student population that doesn't even have the opportunity to get vaccinated. And we have nine more days and I just implore each of us as parents and families to hold on. We are, we're nine and I know this is very difficult. Every single one of your emails are being read. We are talking about it, we're thinking about it and trying to enforce the policies that were set to protect all 1,041 kids and it's not easy. So I thank you for taking this, uh, this task force on. There's a there's a kitty. <laughs> yeah, okay. Anything else to um, kind of talk about with the reports? No. Okay. Um, do we are we ready to move into um, our action items? Um, I'm going to have to move the manifest down just 
a moment. You can try it after. Okay. Could you? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, our next action item is to approve the um, May 6th, 2021 school board retreat minutes. Uh, I make a motion May 6th, 2021 school board retreat minutes. Thank you, Ms. McKinney. Second? I could second. Can we uh, make a motion? We amend your motion to approve all the minutes for May 6th, May 15th, public and non-public, and May 20th. That is public. a wonderful amendment. No, I try. Nice job. Does anyone uh, want to second my I second the... your amendment to my motioned amendment. <laughs> so now we have to vote twice. All in favor of Gary's motion? Aye. 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 Passes. The next um, action item is to accept the donation. I, um, I, just a point of order, just so we don't get in trouble. I don't please. think we approved the amendment. I don't think we approved the actual motion. Great, so we've approved the amendment, and what we're gonna do now is actually approve the minutes? Yes. Great, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. I make a motion to approve all the minutes between May 16th and May 6th and May 20th. I'll motion second. by Ms. McKinney, second by Mr. Hamick. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Andrew, do you have the manifest? I do have the manifest. Wonderful. Uh, I seek a motion to approve the manifest for $846,347.94. I'm sorry, $846,347.94. Second. All, so there was a motion by Mr. Swanson, a second. As a motion by Mr. Hamaker. Mr. Hamick. Hamaker and Hamaker. I seconded it. And seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Um, Susan, do you want to um, talk about the donation from Leela at the Poetry Out Loud? Yes. Thank so, you. Um, many people know, and we had it right up on our banner outside the high school that Lily Bozek um, took the state championship for Poetry Out Loud. Um, we couldn't be any prouder of her. I, I'm going to guess this might be the first time, or at least the first time in a long time we've, we've taken this award. Um, the Poetry Foundation has donated um, $500 to the junior senior high school um, as a um, you know, uh, token of, uh, of appreciation, I guess you could say, for her accomplishment. And so that's what the $500 is for. for that's the Poetry so exciting. Foundation. It's awesome. It's yeah. both, on both accounts, it's awesome. What a great girl. <laughs> if you don't know what the po Poetry Out Loud is, you memorize a poem and you read it. And you read it in front of people and you have to be emotional. And it, it's actually, it's one of the things we've missed the last couple of years. Um, but it's, it's a great program. Mm -hmm. I hope we can continue with it. I think we made it to the regionals last year, if I remember serves me. Yeah. So that's what that's about. I make a motion we accept the $500 donation from Poetry Out Loud. I'll second it. Motion by Mr. Swanson, second by Ms. McKinney. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. <coughs> Congratulations again, Leela. That uh, we're also very proud of you. Uh, let's see, I think that's all that's on our agenda. Um, I'll just remind everyone for the next meetings. Um, building committee meeting is scheduled for June 15th at 5 p.m. at the Junior Senior High School Library Media Center. And next school board meeting will be Thursday, June 17th at 5 p.m. Following school board meeting Tuesday, June 22nd at 5 p.m. And the following through the summer we are meeting in July on Thursday, oh. July 8th at 5 no, p.m. And the next school board retreat is scheduled for Thursday, August 5th. Uh, and then our final summer school board meeting on August 19th. So if there's um, no more items, let me check. I, I seek a motion for adjournment. Uh, oh, thank you. Um, we have um, some materials that were presented to the board. I don't know, was there a process for us to accept it or not accept it? I don't know how. 
It's not uh, Mr. Doust, uh, a, a, a what? member of the public. Okay. Um, I'm sure I, if there's student names on there, there's yeah. no way we could talk to them. Oh, I assume there's I a student yeah, name. I don't, I, don't, I don't know either. I don't know not either. aware of it. I, I, I appreciate what you're trying to do, but I'm just very concerned that if there's student names on there, I can't bring it up. Well, we also can't leave it sitting there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I will take it. I will take the information and okay. give um, it to the high school Well, what principal. we'll do is we will accept Mr. Doust's um, documentation and we'll give it to the superintendent. Um, and then you can. I'll, I'll give it to the principal. Give it to the principals. Okay. Well, if, well, if we're accepting it as a board, then, and and there's no I, student I names just, on it, then. Yeah, I don't yeah, think not, you want I, to accept it as a board because then it becomes part of the meeting. Um, I records. just and I don't know that there's. I don't know, I, I don't what, know what that the is. The information is. is, is I, I don't know that. So I will take it and I will that? share it with uh, back with the administration. Okay, if it's something the, that you feel we that's should the appropriate. share, is that the appropriate? Yeah. Okay. Okay, is there anything else we want to talk about while we are all here? Nope. Okay, I make a motion to adjourn the school board meeting. It is 6.30. Second. Gary Swanson, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone.